Is this world set up for couples? Oh, totally. Are, yeah. you ki- are you kidding? Yes. Totally. Well, I hope I was kidding, but apparently <laughs> not. I can just go cry into my cereal now. No, you want to do anything? You want a house? You want a house? No. You there? Well, you want I'd a house? L- I'd love a house. Everyone wants a house. Yeah. Single? Forget it. For, yeah, even like renting uh, gets easier with, the, with someone to share expenses and electricity bills and all that. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. I haven't been going anywhere in the last two weeks because of petrol prices being so high. Can't leave, can't leave the house. At the moment. Like, yes. I just... Like, and I talk to my friends and, yes, they're like, oh, but we also have to take our kids places so we're spending more, you know, even though we're a couple, we're still going more places. And I'm like, well, you've still got help on a mortgage. <laughs> but you still I'm, can split half the bills, yes, can't you? exactly. Can't you? Huh? I'm, su- I'm convinced that people, not everyone, but some people will race into marriages or relationships because that's their ticket to buying a house. And I think, I don't think people are thinking through, uh, unfortunately, racing into weddings and relationships that, that that they shouldn't that they probably shouldn't have in order to get a fucking house like it's if like here's my issue right so society told me forever that i was going to meet someone yes settle down yes buy a house yes and because i thought that was going to happen i didn't bother setting myself up independently sure. financially totally fine. so i'm now in my 30s going well guess can't buy a house now because i I just wish that somebody... So, so if you're listening out there and you are single, please try to save money as though you are never going to find anybody. <laughs> it's, it's, it will in, help you. It's interesting Listen advice. Listen to Auntie Liz. It's certainly interesting advice. <laughs> Look, just expect to do things as a strong, independent human being and if you get somebody else's income to share, that's a bloody bonus. But don't set your life up just because you think that that's what society no, wants I you to do. I totally agree with you, Liz. So, ma- so much of life is constructed with the idea of you of a partnership in mind. Um, single people, people choose to be single all the time. They're forgotten. They get forgotten. Um, Got to tell you, one thing where single people is really good is if you're trying to buy theatre tickets because, by God, people leave the best uh, single seats. Ah, yes. I've had some of the best theatre experiences of my life because I've been like, one ticket, please. <laughs> Second row, yes. don't mind if I do. Don't mind, and you don't have to, you don't have to mind someone's seat or wait for them in the bar. Yeah, nah. great, fantastic. None of that. Welcome to Ghost of Boyfriends Past. Yes. I'm Liz Best. And Tom Harris. Hello one, hello all. And we have a guest because this is a main episode. Yes, that's right. This is where we get a guest on and we get them to tell a story. And Tom... I thought I'd be a bit nice to you <gasps> this week, and we've got a story that's about a um, a marriage. Yes, that is still together. So, it, some good news on this here show. Finally, it's not going to be all smooth sailing uh, okay. because I have to get my way sometimes. But it is a marriage story, so there you go. I, uh, it's all you get. I just think that. You know, when you get a lot, whole, when you get a whole lot of bad news, or there's a whole lot of depressing news in the uh, going on in the world. It's just living and then in you life get a, now. Yeah. It, <laughs> so in this on this show, every now and then, it's nice to get a reminder that hey, it can sort of work for people. There people is hope. can make it work. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And with that, I will introduce our guest. She oh, is no. an amazing producer, female entrepreneur, Queen <laughs> Jess Ham. Quite the title. Hello, Hello. Jess. Jess. Hi. <laughs> How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. Just a little tired from all of those things you just mentioned before, <laughs> but um, <laughs> surviving, getting there. Yeah. So Jess is in the middle of uh, m- uh, setting up a major theatre production at the moment, a particular show that she's got going. And why don't you tell us a bit about yourself and your company and, and why you yeah, set it up? Yeah, plugs. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I am the Jess Ham of Jess Ham Productions. Um, my female first production theatrical production company yeah and um well basically i set the company up because i felt that there was a lack of authentic representation for women and particularly women of a certain age bracket um i felt women over 40 were severely underrepresented and as a result of that i as a woman entering my 30s was like well, what am I supposed to look like in my 40s? What am I supposed to have mm. achieved? How am I supposed to feel about life? What, you know, what what's normal? What is the norm here? So, so you wanted to set down some foundations. Mm, yeah. And um, 
to see more of the incredible 40 year old and upwards actresses that I love and adore actually working because I think they've in got so good much roles, talent and skill. In decent, good, mm. meaty roles. Mm, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Not just the mum or the grandma yes, or the auntie. Cast, yes. yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Fantastic. I commend you for doing it. Uh, if you can't find a job, make your own is is a, is a something I did five years ago. We started a business in my family, so couldn't find a job, made a job. So well done on, well done on recognizing something that you wanted in the world and just and going for it to change it. That's uh, I like it. I'm all I about like it. it too. <laughs> I, I like Thank it too. I like it. And we'll talk a little bit about the show that she's got coming up, which is very exciting towards the end of the show, so that we can give you all the plugs and all the links in the show notes for all things Jess Ham. Productions. Fantastic. Now, Jess has joined us on Ghosts of Boyfriends Past. New readers, you might be wondering, what the hell are we here to do? Now, it's tempting to say, Liz, that we get people on to have a bit of a dish and gossip about their life. And, that is exactly and, what and, we do. And, and that is part and parcel. <laughs> we're not going de- to deny this, okay? But there is a ho- more wholesome kumbaya uh, bint to it where we un- try and understand what happened in this story. And we ask, what did we learn? Yes. So we we try and bring we try and bring some some good things out of out of generally awkward stories, sad, traumatic stories. Happy, we try, happy every now and then. Trouble. We try we try and uh, we try and look for the silver lining in, Tom in, does. in these stories. I well, don't like the silver lining. It's not as entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the fire and brimstone and dump him button is yes. all is very fun. See, that's that, that's so seductive. That stuff. It's so you know, like every now and then I hear nice stories though, and they make my little heart, you know, grow it's, half a uh, size, yin, not a full size. The yin and yang of life. Uh, so every every major episode, we have some rules for our guests that I must insist we go over. And one of the rules just doesn't have to follow today. Doesn't have, doesn't even... It's not, not even. the no threats rule. You still can't make any threats to anybody <laughs> on yes. air. Yes, 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 no threats. Uh, <laughs> generally, we ask a guest to use an alias for who they're talking about so that we can avoid doxing and sharing of private information. But that's not a that's not an, an issue. On nope, she's got full permission to full use permission. actual <laughs> name. Fantastic. So. You're the first person who has full permission. Someone has used the name going, I'm sure they'll be all right with it. But you're the first person who has full <laughs> yes. permission. And look, it, I guess she doesn't have to follow. I mean, we still have the don't be a dick rule where, you know, if you know yes. who Jess is talking about, don't be a dick. But if you know Jess, you're going to know who Jess is talking about because she's using their name. <laughs> That's right. So it's just a general don't be a dick in life rule this week. Yes. I think. <laughs> if, if you get all, all of you listening, just avoid being a, a colossal cock for, for, a, <laughs> for a week. That would be that would be lovely. Well, that's rules out of the way. We know our, we've got our guest. Yes. I'm so just going to sit back. The podcast, <laughs> we're called Ghosts of Boyfriends Past. And technically that's still what this is because this person and relationship you're going to talk about is now your husband. So that yes. still works. Yes. I'm yes. jamming it in there. So tell me, let's start like at the very beginning of, mm-hmm. of your story. So how old were you? And had you had you dated anybody else before you found... I had had a previous stint. A stint? A stint. Not, uh, we'd held hands. Oh, In please. high school. Oh. Um, that's, that definitely but, is the definition of a stint. <laughs> mm, yeah, we'd walked home, held hands one time, but, but that didn't last more than a couple of weeks, um, as you do in grade 10. Yeah. Um, and then I was, I was a bit sort of um, worried as I got further into my teens and the more I saw of the men that I was surrounded by at the time. Um, because I thought, oh my God, is this the standard? Is this what I have to mm. accept? And it's not the standard. I'm very happy to report that I have since met a lot of wonderful men who are very respectful. It was just at the time. I was like, are they single? And can you introduce me? <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you a list. I okay, would, cool. I would, I would yeah. give that advice. Ignore, <laughs> ignore men until we get to 24, 25. But, but before <laughs> then, we're all the same person. We're all like, they're all, we're all the same person. We, we all pretend to like the same things. We're sort because we're so insecure. Don't even bother with us until we've, we've matured a bit and we've got our full, our brain is fully developed. I would. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Think that's, 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 that's a good mark. I'm not yeah. being um, argued with here. No. Um, but to answer your question, Liz, I was um, 19 when I met Tristan. Uh-huh. Actually, to go even further back than when I met him, I actually saw him on stage performing in Boy From Oz. Oh. Uh. He was playing the character Greg at the time. And um, 
yeah, I was in the audience and I saw um, I saw him and I thought, oh, he's beautiful. You just get a little bit of a talent crush. Yeah, and that. then he opened his voice, his mouth to sing, and I was like, oh my god, that voice, ah. beautiful. Yeah, I've been there. Didn't mm. end up as nicely as yours did. <laughs> <laughs> Because fucking actors. But anyway. <laughs> well, I mean, I was very intimidated yes. by his talent and um, just how lovely he was as a human being. So when we did finally meet in um, a show that we were both in, um, I didn't know how to approach him. And he was older. He was 25. I was 19. See? Ignore them till they're 25. The rule, the rule Absolutely stands perfect. up. <laughs> Yeah, definitely, especially when I look at the progression he made from 25 to 30. I'm like, Oof. time helps. Yes. <laughs> time and experience. Um, but, yeah, so um, we first met in a show and then we became um, good friends, um, not super, super close. And I just remember, yeah, just being really surprised by him and how mature he was. And I loved that he was a nerd because <laughs> my little nerd heart – just loved that um and he got my number one day from a mutual friend and and messaged me and asked me if I'd go out with him and that was that just a whirlwind romance from there end of story end of episode no no (laughs) definitely I wish (laughs) um but yeah I actually thought today I would talk more about my faux pas than his bless Uh, like it anytime anytime someone on air or off air puts up their hand and says yeah here's how I fucked up or here's how I did wrong (laughs) great the world needs more of that more self accountability I'm into it I mean let me just be clear he's not perfect (laughs) (laughs) he's made plenty of mistakes Um, but um, I think that there's there's a good what did I learn story from from these stories Um, so yeah Sort of leaning into what you were saying a bit earlier, Liz, how there's that pressure to find your person, to settle down, to get married, to have a home and family and everything like that. I came from a very strict Catholic family, oldest of seven. Um, being a girl, there was all that pressure to get married. To marry you off first. They're not allowed to marry the rest of the... Isn't that the rules? No. <laughs> yeah, and because I sinned before marriage, <gasps> I don't know if we can... How dare you? It was... Yeah, it was just um, a lot of pressure from my my parents. I don't even think they were aware of it because I tell them now and they're like, what? We would never do that. (laughs) Mm. Um, But, yeah, they did. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So at at 19, I found the person that I knew I wanted to spend the rest of my life with and we weren't – we didn't hold back on those dreams together. We talked about marriage and children and homes and future careers that we would have that would help us achieve those goals which is a lot at 19. Um, And I was studying at the time creative industries drama because I wanted to get more into acting and just find find my feet in performance. Mm. Um, Wasn't really sure what that looked like. Probably wasn't that degree, if I'm honest. But after being with Tristan for a year, I felt that I need to get you know, my head screwed on properly and find a a real proper profession. So I dropped my major and picked up nursing instead. Huh. That's a, that's a quite a roundabout change. It was. And you know how everyone says, don't change who you are for a man. Mm, They do say that. Mm. I do say that all of the time. Yep. And I completely ignored everyone (laughs) that told me that, that little golden nugget there. I was like, no, no, I know better. No, I'm... I'm going to have my white picket fence and, you know, my three gorgeous children and have that life that, you know, I wanted. And I can't do that without a responsible career Mm. like nursing. Yeah, exactly. I was a nurse at the time. I was um, in assistant nursing. But um, I thought, well, if you become an RN, a registered Mm. nurse, you know, that's like feet solidly planted on the ground. Mm. Um, Hated it and dropped it three or four months later because I – remembered why it was just a job that I did in the meantime while I was trying to pursue a career in acting um and of course with all of those dreams I started buying up magazines wedding magazines Mm -hmm. cutting out all of the dresses that I wanted um picking out um bouquets and things like that I put together 
collages. And Were you engaged at this point? Or no, no, I was not. <laughs> okay. No, I no. was just All 20 right, and stupid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No um, judgment. <laughs> <laughs> that's right i judge myself for the both of us <laughs> um yeah and then not long after that um my dad decided that he didn't like his little girl living in sin and so he was gonna kind of give us a bit of a nudge and he had seen this wedding venue that he had really liked Oh, man. And that's my dad. He's oh, <laughs> bless his little soul. He's yeah, very much like that. So he he said, "Well, um I've met with the the <laughs> Sorry, my uh, my jaw just hit the floor." Yes. He's, yep. Uh, Wait, I've may, met, I, I've, may I briefly inquire how long you and <laughs> your Justin, Justin less Tristan, than a year. Less than a year. Thank you. <laughs> yep. Okay. Yeah, less than a year. We were very serious about each other in fairness, but it's one thing to talk about it and to go, this is somewhere in our future. I'm happy with and to meet that. with, And then to meet with an event coordinator. <laughs> mm, yeah. yeah. It is amusing. I'll, I'll give it that. It yeah. is amusing. Oh, my gosh. So, so did he just tell you this or did he tell you both of this? No, no. Just me. Okay. Just me. Um, it, was, it was a rainy day. No. Um, <laughs> it was... Tristan had left for work because he was he would stay with me at my parents' house. God knows how they let that happen, that they would let him stay in the same room as me. Yeah, gosh. Um, so maybe they were more progressive than I thought. But anyway, um, yeah, and then he had left for work and Dad was like, you know, I've, I've, I've met with this event coordinator. She's really good and this, this venue is lovely. Um, maybe we could go have a meeting with her today. <laughs> today? <laughs> Come on. Let's see some enthusiasm. And you could pretend you're engaged. (laughs) And just make up a date and we'll say the date got changed around later on. Yeah. We could do that. We could we could do Mayhaps those things. We could. We could go to a this wedding planner a and say I'm engaged, and we we, we yeah we're going to book this telling venue. the person that I'm dating at all. We could do all these all of these things, Father. You're right. Yes. So he's like, oh, you've got that ring. So I had a <laughs> ring that was given to me by my great grandmother. Yeah. It was a beautiful garnet ring. Got the ring. And he said, put on that. Put it on the other hand. So I did because I was 20 and you must obey your father. Um, so me and mum and dad, we went down oh, to this wedding venue and we told the event coordinator, who was a lovely lady in fairness, like she was just so lovely and she went along with every everything we said. You're a good actress. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, showed us all around and said, I can email you all of these links and the packages and everything like that. And I loved the venue. Um, and <clears throat> yeah, so I, I fell in love with the venue and the idea of getting married just seemed oh. that much closer. <laughs> um, and then Tris came home that afternoon. Yes. Mm. And was very surprised when I told him what had happened. <laughs> and by this, so by this point, <laughs> you've kind of bought the vision, right? Because you've seen, initially you're like, oh, what, yeah. this is weird. I'm not going to go. Get, but I then took you out see the, the mortgage on the vision. Like, yeah. 100%. So yeah. 12 hours previous, you two would have been on the exact same page. Like, no, we're not. This is fucking weird. But you've all jumped of a whole us, book ahead. All of a sudden, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he had seen the wedding collages I had made. Right. So, so yeah, he was already going, mm, okay. But booking but. an appointment without the potential groom Without seems... being engaged. Yeah, it's a... I, yeah. Yeah. Like just a little on the cray-cray spectrum. Oh, I love it. It makes perfect. <laughs> 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 Let's <laughs> like, every, like, everyone do this. Yeah. It, can be cra- it can be crazy and funny. We're, yes. we're not disputing that. Who says that. you need a boyfriend? Just go book an appointment. <laughs> <laughs> It's good to get Maybe if I book an appointment, I'll ma- yep, No, I don't want to. Look, live in hope, <laughs> okay? Manifest. You know yeah. what? I like my relationship with myself. If I could find a guy to good. stick around with just for some fun, I wouldn't turn that down. But uh, I, I don't. I don't have time to consider <laughs> other people anymore. <laughs> so, so he. So did he? How did he? I've got so many questions. Yes. Did he freak out? <laughs> yeah. How Was did that he conversation like, go? This is weird. So. If you know my husband, Tristan, you you can understand how his freakouts happen on the inside. Uh-huh. Mm. Um, he's, yeah, he internalises a lot. 
So his reaction was, hmm. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> okay. Fascinating. <laughs> and then didn't really want to talk to me about it. That would have scared after me that. shitless if I was you. Yes. and if I it, mean, it, it should have. <laughs> <laughs> it should have. But I was not that kind of – I'm still not that kind of girl, if I'm honest. I will – I will just push and push and push. Um. In, the, in the moment, it feels like a no win because you either say, no, this is crazy and you get tarnished a villain because how, how, how dare you not want to marry me? Or you go, yes, this is this, let's do it. And you're getting married after less than a year together. So it, at the, in the moment when you get struck with that, it feels like a, like a no win situation. So I understand Absolutely. a bit of the... Um, interesting. Okay. And mm. sort of nearly needing Appropriate to, response. Needing to <laughs> dwell on it a little. Yeah. And I think that's the thing is because um, he was scared of my reaction. And, and like you said, it's no win. So he was like, oh my God, how do I, how do I react to this? Um, but yeah, I, I pushed and pushed and was like, well, don't you want to talk about it? Don't you want to know? And he said, I think we just need to slow down. Yeah. And, and just, just take it day by day for a moment. I did not like hearing that. No, I can't at imagine. 20. No. Um, I was quite upset by that. And it turned out like the aftermath of that was that I noticed that he was starting to pull away. Uh-huh. And, you know, little things where he'd normally text me back straight away or would, you know, ask me when we're next catching up or take me out to dinner I was starting to have to do those things and I was the one having to go, hey, it's been three hours and you haven't messaged me back. What's three going on? Three whole hours. How did you cope? <laughs> oh, my God. Sorry. I cannot when you tell were, you. When you were 20 years old, Elizabeth, <laughs> that three hours is a three lifetime. Three hours is like, right? yeah. But you yeah. should have seen the lightning speed he had started out with when we first got together. Uh, <laughs> Eager. He set, the, yeah. set, he set the bar uh, too high for himself. Yes, mm. yeah. So, um, yeah, he started to pull away. Um, and it was really, really hard for me to take that. Um, he would go out. So we were doing different shows at the time and I noticed that he wanted to spend more time with, with his friends, which is not a bad thing. It's actually quite a good thing and a healthy thing, but it had just been such a stark contrast to how we had operated as a couple. Especially coming after an event that you know would have caused some... Mm. Humming mm. internally. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but did I shut up and just leave it and just take it didn't. day by day? No, I didn't. No, I was didn't. 20 and stupid. So I said, I um, addressed it one day. I said, do you want to break up? Oh, man. You don't yeah. go straight to the do you want to break up. Have I a conversation. <sighs> no, so, uh, I, so I, had, up, huh? yeah, I had plenty of conversations at him. Yes. <laughs> Um, but just nothing that had elicited any kind of response. Okay. Because, you know, you he just didn't know. I think he just didn't know. The poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, one day we were in the car and I had just had enough of not knowing what was going on. And I think even if he had said, look, I don't want to get married right now, that probably... I probably needed to hear that, mm. um, but not hearing anything, that's really hard. Yes, agreed. Um, so, under- so understand, well, he takes a bit of, he take, it's a bit of a knock to the system having that, that, uh, that wedding thing dumped on him. Mm-hmm. But as time goes on, yeah, buddy, we need a bit more. We need to have a conversation. They need, you, know, we need, you need to let me know how you're feeling here. Yes. yes, yeah. And I'm the kind of person who's like, I can take it, I can take it. And then when I hear the news, I, I struggle with it. Right. So <laughs> I can't take it. <laughs> do we point out, and we can cut this out if you don't want to point this out, mm-hmm. but do we point out that he had previously been engaged before the fact that you guys had dated? Yes. Yeah. And okay, I think good. that is very relevant. Because I just wanted to point that out yeah, so that it doesn't right. seem quite like Jess is racing to the finish line because she already knows that he <laughs> has done that. Are with somebody previously. Right. Interesting. So this makes you look better. I just, I just wanted okay. to put it out there. <laughs> yeah, he started down this garden path before. So yes, we're, exactly. We're, yeah, right, exactly. Gotcha. Okay, interesting. Yeah, and I think in his mind, and quite rightly so, he knew that the motivation for proposing in the past had been quite rushed mm-hmm. and had been probably 
uh, a bit too impulsive mm. and he has expressed that to me um, since then. Um, so his, you know, in fairness, he was probably like, well, I would like to maybe get married one day, but I don't want to do it under the same terms. Like I want to propose on my terms yeah, whereas, when I'm actually ready. Whereas you're also sitting there going, well, he proposed to her, so why won't he just – why why can't we talk mm. about this now? So mm-hmm. that whole – this has happened before was a catalyst for both of your reactions yeah, to the current right. situation, which I feel like yeah. contextually is important. Yeah, absolutely. Because um, I was like, well, did you love her more than me? I know. Is she more important to you than I am? Like, what did she give you that I'm not giving you? You know, all of those questions. Um, and I I don't know he had the words to, to respond to that at the time. Like... Because he probably had never thought about that. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It just wasn't a thought. It was more of a feeling of mm. just knowing, well, it's not right. Right now is not right. Um, so, yeah, it. we went through a massive, um, I guess you'd say, trial in our relationship. Pro- uh, proceeding? No? Yeah. Yeah, uh, proceeding that that you particular feel, incident. You can, you can feel tension and space between you. Where you're, you're still together. You're still dating. You're still in a relationship. Yes. But it, there is something in that mood that feels, I don't know, it's hard. It is hard to describe. But I will say this. I, I hope I'm not jumping ahead here. But that particular incident of him pulling away was probably the best thing for me as a human being. Fantastic. Mm. Because I realized how much I had been neglecting myself. Mm-hmm. And how I had, yeah, just given up who I was and all my aspirations and hopes and dreams um, to pursue someone I loved, sure, but forgetting who I am along the way. You and get then, such tunnel vision yep. when you see that white picket fence in your brain. And I have been mm-hmm. a victim of this as well. You get such tunnel vision. You're like, just a little bit further, just a little bit further. I can look after myself later, but we're just, we're so close. Like, yeah. Yeah, and it feels like weddings and marriage and children and all that, it's like a goal. Yes, mm-hmm. yep. yep. It's like a, a, a lifelong goal that you have to achieve. Yeah, and for a long time I felt like a big old failure for not having been able to, <laughs> this is going to sound terrible, but keep my man when in reality <clears throat> I should have tossed them a lot earlier because I didn't <laughs> want to go to that goal. Society just told me that I wanted that goal. So. Um. And uh, for women, there's a ticking time. There's a ticking clock for if if you want kids. You yeah. also have to factor that into getting like finding a husband, finding your, your mm. partner, and getting married. All these milestones that apparently we have to tick off. I don't know. No one ever laid down these rules. No one ever said, "Look, you got to get married." But it's it became ingrained in in us all. These yeah. milestones we have to get to. Interesting. And here's the catch twenty two: is the more of yourself that you give up for that dream, the less of a good partner you become. Yes. You actually, in losing yourself, you lose a part of the part of, the part of you that made you attractive to that person in the first place. Mm. Um, you know, I was studying drama. Tris really respected that. Um, I had a love of my family and uh, like all of these qualities that I had kind of let drop aside and not taken as much time for and all of that just so that I could, you know, pursue that quote unquote goal Mm. of marriage. Um, and I realized I never, ever want to do that again. So I I quickly sought some help. I said to him, let's have a break. I, I said, I... I think I need to detox you from my system. <laughs> so I said, I'm I'm gonna give my I'm gonna go cold turkey for a week. We're not gonna talk for a week. And then I'm just gonna figure myself out and then we're gonna talk and we're gonna figure out what we want out of this relationship. That is incredibly psychologically healthy of you. Very, very, very good. <laughs> Considering up. everything that went came before yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> someone little impressed me. Flicked myself. the emotional health switch. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so um, it, that that's how it became the best thing that I did because Great. I vowed I would never give myself up for somebody else um, ever again. Mm. So, yes. And and so after the week passed, you just went, let, let, let's do this again, please, now? <laughs> yeah, after the week passed, we both agreed that we weren't going to talk about marriage for a while. We were just going to take it day by day. Mm. Um, and not really not really address the future unless we felt it was right. 
Um, yeah, it was really just a, honestly, I cannot emphasize this enough. Taking things day by day is like the best thing that you can do. Just, you know, sit on the couch and watch a movie together or, you know, talk about stupid things or laugh in bed raucously at cat memes, <laughs> you know, like all those, all those little things that you, you kind of take for granted in looking at the big picture. Stop and smell the roses as a couple together because I think that's where you find your strongest compatibility and that's where we came back to truly who we were as a couple and every time we come back to that space and we forget about the big picture for a moment, that's when we really are the strongest and the most united. Amazing. It's really, really sweet and really good, wholesome advice. Uh, I think I, I don't. I'm all aboard that. Everything you've just you just rattled off there. Really, yeah. Because you in a lifetime, right? You look back and you you do hit you hit the major milestones if you're looking back on your life. Oh, that's right. I graduated that and did this. But it it is the day by the day to day. That's the hard. That's the that's where the hard mm. well hard work in a relationship lies. That's where the mm. busy work is, and that's what. But I think that's also where the best stuff is. When mm. you were l- listing off those quite the laughing on the couch together, I think everyone listening would have recalled their own m- those moments in relationships they have or or have had. Hmm, very nice. Because when you're facing conflict, those are the things you should remember. Absolutely. In those moments. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. And uh, that week that you said, do we call it soul searching? Because I'm kind of ob- yeah, yeah, ob- obsessed with the <laughs> idea of soul searching on this podcast. Yeah, <laughs> Tom is firmly of the belief that you cannot go off and soul search in five minutes. Yeah, you've got to, <clears throat> it takes time. You've got to le- you've got to go and actually actually stare into the void a bit. Um, mm-hmm. So it's, it's in a week. It sounds like you you settled that and uh, and really discovered where you'd gone. I don't know, a stew or a stray. Rediscovered yourself. Yeah. Um. Well, yeah, I I sought some psychological help. Good. <laughs> Which Fine. we advocate for yeah, on this yeah. podcast. Yeah, don't Absolutely. Be, don't, never be ashamed of that. Um, I also got myself medicated as well, which is um, something that I think we look down on society and we really shouldn't because it very much has saved my life. Yeah. Um, on several occasions, you know, um, and I think – yeah, we shouldn't look down on taking medication if we have to. If you can't important. make your own serotonin, store bought is fine. Yes, exactly, that's absolutely right. fine. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I did the things to get myself psychologically where I needed to be. I hung out with friends as much as I could, um, and it was really hard. Like I, I just want to like point that out. It, that that is not an easy thing to do to go cold turkey on that. What what's the love? Is it in the love hormone dopamine Dopamine. Dopamine. yeah yes to go from like full-fledged everyday dopamine high Mm. to just having to live with the everyday humdrum of your own personal life and as we did point out three hours is an eternity when you're in your 20s so a week a whole week that's forever (laughs) yeah and it was the longest hardest week of my life at that point um but it was yeah absolutely hands down the best thing i did would highly recommend to and, any anyone. and look, they ended up getting married in the end because they were taking it day by day rather than rushing to that finish line. Yeah, and it became less about the dopamine high as well mm. because you get to then finally think, well, what's remaining? So, mm. well, because they yeah. say that in the first year of a relationship is when you have all the different hormones that are going on in your body, and they say that it takes up to twelve months to the for those for those uh, particular hormones that make you feel the giddy first flush romance stuff to actually die off. So mm-hmm. making major decisions in those first 12 months might not be wise if you don't know how to live and exist together without mm. without your hormones going um, crazy about the other person. Uh, so you, you, uh, you spend a week apart, you get back together, the relationship keeps going, it continues day by day, yep. step by step. Eventually you do get married. How does that conversation like? <laughs> is that so much smoother and nicer when that when that happens? If I'm prying too it much would, into your private yeah. life, please. No, not at all. Um, yeah. So um, we took it day by day, and then one time, one day, I was helping out backstage for a show that Tristan was in, Jekyll and Hyde, um, and I was backstage for some reason. I can't remember why, and I noticed that I had to clip my nails, and he always carries nail clippers in his bag. So I went into his bag and. I saw a little (laughs) jewellery bag in the bag and I thought, oh, did he buy a gift for like the director or something or 
interesting. He didn't take me along. Like, hello, my taste is exemplary. So <laughs> why did yeah. he not she take right. me along? Um, so I got curious and I looked inside the bag and I noticed it was about ring size. And it took me a full minute to just grasp the fact that that was for me. <laughs> like, oh, oh, wait, there's a ring in here. Um, I freaked out so much that I actually threw the bag away from me. <laughs> That is a very different response <laughs> from going with daddy to the yeah, wedding planner. Yes, isn't it? I think because it became real. Yeah. Like, because it went from, like, yeah, going to the wedding planner and uh, building a, an idea in my head. That's just in my head, that's you know? Mood, that's manifesting and yeah. mood boarding. What yeah. are you talking about? Yeah, it's not real. Seeing the actual ring in my boyfriend's bag, that's a different situation. So, um, yeah, I approached him that night because I could not keep it a secret I tried I really <laughs> couldn't we were both in bed that night and lights were out and it was ready to fall asleep and um I kind of just quietly said to him so about that ring in your bag <laughs> oh Jess and um <laughs> it took him a couple of minutes to respond <laughs> he just went dead still I would have played silent. dead I would have played asleep <laughs> I think he tried to for like two or three minutes and then he goes, we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's not on the table for discussion. We'll, be, we'll table that for another for another day. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So um, you're just meant to go to sleep. And bed and yeah, I know. I was it. like, what the hell? <laughs> uh, yes, we are going to talk about this. Um, but no, I had, I had learnt to kind of like try as hard as it was to, to go, okay, and respect his... Wishes to make that, to keep that his thing that he got to do for me. Um, it was really hard. Um, but yeah, then on my 21st birthday, um, uh, he got down on one knee and proposed. Oh. And it was beautiful. And um, I think 150 of my friends and family were there to witness the event. Oh my goodness. So yeah, it was a big, massive deal. It was great. Yeah, beautiful. Adorable. Wow. So you, it, in, um, it's sometimes... Uh, quite often, people will spoil their own uh, everything. Uh, well, everything. <laughs> people will spoil just they'll just wreck their own life. But um, they'll ruin their own proposal. Yeah, You're right. Does that? Mm. Had you been totally, I don't know. I don't know. Had you been totally, would it have meant more if you had been totally blindsided by it, or having the time to mull it over and get excited? Yes, it's gonna. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I have thought about that quite a lot, actually. Mm. And to be honest. Um, I'm a mystery to myself and I cannot tell you. doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter, maybe, is, is, is yeah. an answer. It, the, 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 uh, I just try to rationalise it in that that was his gift to give to me or his way of showing or expressing his love for me. So it really... Without my, you pushing yeah. him mm. into it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, with, so I just had to give him his space. Yeah. Yeah. And I think Which is a good lesson it doesn't matter yes. what, yeah. for us all in giving partners who want space their space. Because yeah. sometimes that's all it takes to fix problems. Mm. Give yep. people space when yep. they ask for it. So you've said a few of the lessons that you've learned along the way. So what would you say the overarching lesson that you learned from this time in your life was? I think if I could go back and just sit down and have a coffee with 20-year-old Jess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would tell her that she is enough and that a marriage and children and a house and all of those fancy things that we're told we have to want is not going to make you more enough than you already are. You're mm. already there, girl. Like, chill out, enjoy the little moments in life. Um, because there are so many to enjoy and there is an abundance of beautiful tiny moments that you can enjoy before that that make everything else so much more worthwhile. So, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Tom? I, I, I want to quickly echo that. That's a wonderful bit of life advice because, and it carries on from relationships, someone in your life will, won't be on this planet anymore. That happened to me recently. And yeah, it is nice to remember uh, you, what you do is you remember the small things all the time. Mm. Uh, that's what you default to. My life lesson is, Jess, you said you forgot who you were, in your, uh, or you lost track of who you were, and if you do that, you'll, you, uh, you can always sense in your partner if they're unhappy or uh, or something's bothering them, and if they're not 
showing up in their best because they're unhappy with their life choice. So it's for not losing track of who you are and because uh, I don't know it's it's hard to hard to articulate yeah um, just make sure that you I would say just make sure that you keep your sense of self in a mm. relationship so that if you find if you wake up one day and realize that you've changed a bunch of things ask yourself why whether it was a choice that you wanted in your yeah, own heart that's or whether it's something that you're doing because you think you should because society says you should because a partner says you should because your parents say you should mm. you know Interesting. Um, my main lessons are twofold the first is that I really loved the message of taking things day by day. I think it's really important to wake up every day and choose the person that you're with. So mm. my parents have been together for 30 years and actually, was it 30 years in the pandemic? I lost time in the pandemic. I don't know what's <laughs> happened in the last two years, yes. over 30 years. Um, and they're not married because they've mm. decided that they wanted to wake up and choose each other every day. And I think that by doing that, you're not racing towards some kind of invisible finish line. Because, like, what do you do when you get there? You're like, okay, yep. well, that's done. Yep, that's right. What, like, so waking up and choosing a person every day and choosing to remember those moments is good. My second lesson is that when you need to have a talk with someone because their behavior has been a bit different, <laughs> don't go straight to... Do you want to break up with me? Yes, it's not the, it's not the smooth opener. We're all we're all crying out. That's for. not the first thing you go to. There are many steps before you go. You just want to dump me, don't you? <laughs> yes, the, the nuclear button is there. Yeah, but you don't, don't have to. Don't push it. The first button. There are so <laughs> many other buttons to push before. It'll, it'll still be there. You can press it if need be. Like I'll dump him. Uh, dump them button. Forgive me. So Jess. Mm. Now's the time where we get to talk about the cool show that you have coming oh, yeah, up bloke. in mm, Brisbane. Perfect. Can Yay. you tell us a little bit about it and what the dates are? And we can put links to buying tickets in the show notes, but plug away. Okay, so Bombshells um, is an incredible play um, by Australian playwright Joanna Murray Smith. The play was actually written for Caroline O'Connor, which is very exciting for me because the fact that it was written specifically with another female actress in mind you know showcasing her skill and her talent and just her expertise um on stage um is exactly what i want to do for our three actresses that we have in in the play um yeah so this is an opportunity to see six characters that are authentic and real and a little manic um they're on Aren't the edge of a breakdown <laughs> Um, and just see three incredible actresses that are just going to blow your socks off. Um, we will be showing at the Ron Hurley Theatre at Seven Hills mm -hmm. um, from the 14th of April to the 17th of April. Wonderful. And we will have all of the booking details in the show notes as well as links to everything Jess Ham Productions. Yes, get your um, hot little hands on some hot little tickets. Get out there and, and enjoy <laughs> some live theatre. It hasn't Please been happening in the new year. Get out and see a show. So this is in Brisbane, Australia, so we are very sorry for our international listeners. Yes. It's no, probs. it's no excuse. Australia's just <laughs> opened their borders. Get, get down on here. a plane. Right? I'll even get to the Ron Hurley Theatre. <laughs> Where the bloody hell are you? I'll even, I'll even ocker it up for you. Get down here. Uh, well, very good, everyone. Thanks for listening. Uh, no, I don't like it. Ghost of Boyfriend's it. Past. Get rid of it. No. Uh, <laughs> I will fire you. So, so swiftly <laughs> turned on upon. No. Cease this at once. Ochre is bad. <laughs> Unless it's authentic. Authentic ochre is fun, but not – I no, don't no, like no, ochre, no, Tom. No, no. So if you would like to submit yourself to be a guest, you can go to that'snotcanon.com forward slash ghosts of boyfriends past. And can I please urge you, if you have applied to be on the show recently, please check your junk mail because I've just got in contact with a bunch of people and I haven't heard anything back and I'm really keen to have you on the show because your story sounds hilarious. Yes, it's, hilarious. Not, it's, it's not you, it's us in this in this case, but we're trying to make it... Uh, we're trying to, we're trying trying to make to it a little bit smoother it. so that we don't... I think, I think some of our emails are getting filtered and I'm not happy about it, but it, Google just tells me to deal with it. So <laughs> that's what I got to do. Well, Otherwise, rate, review, yes. subscribe. We love you. And and Tom, anything else to say? Look, but we want to buy a house, right? So that's why you're <laughs> listening and that's why you're rating, right? We need the ad revenue. We need a house. Do it. Okay, cool. <laughs> do it so that we can buy a house, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah.
When you walk through an art museum, what happens? You see some interesting things. You see some not so interesting things. <laughs> and if you're like me at all, you, you're probably a little bit sleepy. Well, grab a cafecito and listen up. It's Art Slice, a palatable serving of art history. I'm Russell Shoemaker. I'm Stephanie Duenas. We are not your daddy's art history <laughs> podcast. We are both artists, so we look at art history through that perspective. We cover the artists you know and those that have been ignored for so many different reasons. We look at the context of the time. We compare it to today. We don't dumb anything down, but, and this is a big but, hey, we like to have a good time, okay? Nos gusta to goof <laughs> around, all right? We have hungry pantry oh, no, mons that no, might startle you. It's a long story. We, we feed them our materials. Art is just a visual language, so in order for us to interpret what we think it's saying, we hijack the work. Right. How do you like that for an art heist? Exactly. And ultimately, we decide if it belongs in our Art Slice Museum on okay. top of the Art Slice okay. Hilltop. Okay. So, so if this all sounds right. good to you, join us on Art Slice a palatable serving of art history.